Kami fizik. You don't know sebab. Mak tahu dah apa? Going to new form of life. Kenal apa? Orang yang influence you to become a negative person. Pergi clubbing. No? Pergi all these things. Sama kerja terasa. <laughs> Seriously. Think about it. Our life is full of timelines. Now until like 25 or 30 or 20 years old. You are doing your best. Imagine you've al al fatah. Is it al fatah? You've al fatah. Now you start zoom data. Organizer. You know? Or myself or Ustaz. Ten years after do I know I'm an Ustaz kita? I also don't know. Ten years after am I a person who's good? I also don't know. So never put yourself eh, in the arrogance mode that once you preach here, you are better. I want to stress this point over and over again because I kadang-kadang minta maaf macam menyapa tengok on Facebook people who feel their supremacies they preach more and after they feel like they are the best I am so angry this kind of people I just don't want to I'm so happy You have to be humble no matter how good you are because it's in relation to your heart If your heart has no sense of humility you will be in for a long trouble in your life. Okay? Next up. Knowledge. Knowledge is very important. Why? Because Elmu is the whole source of your dawa. Kalau you are here, you don't even know what you're talking. You might do more harm than good. You might do more harm than good. Okay? So always be in learning mode. A lifelong learning, sampai ke akhir hayat. Okay, do not put everything and post it without verifying. So, you know, salah sebenar. Without verifying. Kat Facebook pun banyak. Kampang di quote je, post, 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 post. They will jadi fitnah. Okay, you quote, you share, you quote, you share. Kalau you know the context of that thing, and you share, it's okay. Dan kalau you main share je, ada dia orang lain yang apa, apa lain pula. So, this is what I'm trying to say. Equip yourself with proper knowledge before you want to share. And that doesn't mean you have to get a degree. Lah. Why are you saying somebody has taught you properly, you have understood properly, why don't you share? Okay? So this can be a form of illnesses you can find on Facebook. Okay? So know who you are speaking to. Not everyone. You can use the same method. So in other words, this is where you practice your wisdom lah. Okay, your knowledge to you must have the right place for the right people at the right time. Okay, bukan okay, semua orang sama. Ada yang lembut, ada yang kasar, ada yang tengah-tengah dan sebagainya. So what do you use your approach, your psychology? You must learn the real psychology. You must talk in a different tone. You want to marah orang yang kasar, marah lah mungkin that can work and so on. Okay? Next one. For example, I'll just give you an example of something which I wrote about knowledge. Eh? You have to understand about Islamic systems. There's a lot of Islamic systems that we have not even learned or covered. I'll just give you an example like to get Islam akhlaq in general. Okay, society in Islam. What does Islam say about the society? Okay, the governance in Islam. What does Islam talk about? When it mention about governance and so on. So economy in itself pun dalam Islam aku maksudnya riba dan sebagainya and war in Islam. Okay, again I'm not trying to say go for war, but these are just examples of knowledge that you might not even know. So how far is your knowledge actually there to go on an aggressive way, that war or these kind of matters? Okay, next one. And even for definition of Islam, I ask you now, which one is the definition of Islam? How do you define Islam? How would you define Islam? What do you think about Islam? I mean, how would you define Islam? Eh? Has it ever occurred to you there can be a lot of definitions of Islam? And all of them can be justifiable? Have you ever think of that? Banyak lah. These are just six. There are so many definitions of Islam you can find in books. Way of life. The guidance. Yeah. Set of rules set by God. Answer to the human God and nature kind of concept, philosophical Islam, and so on. Okay, so 
Which one is the definition of Islam? You tell me. Siapa nak jawab? Isha would you choose? Takkan nak say, hey, dia nak jawab kan? Hey, hidayah, I don't know. Okay, so which one? Who would like to answer? What is the definition of Islam? You say you are Muslim. You say you are Muslim, but do you don't even know the definition of Islam? So this is for you to think of how and why I'm trying to point out the importance of knowledge. Okay, next one. A sound heart, a pure heart. Okay. As a da'i, your heart first of all has to be the cleanest element. So put that motto as it. Any riders? Any car drivers? Any lorry drivers move it? Better move it. Okay, most importantly, as an engine, as a da'i, your heart has to be clean first before you talk to others about Islam. You have to have a sincere heart. That's why the first part I say humility though is also in relation to a sound heart. Because in humility you will learn a lot of traits which will actually develop you towards a better person. And this better person can preach a better Islam. Inshallah. Okay? And you have to uphold a noble in your heart and character. Okay, do not judge a person, for example. These are all things in the heart which will bring forth your character. And as a da'i, your heart is the most important part of the whole system. Okay, and that's why the heart is the whole engine of your dawah and preaching, inshallah. Okay? Mercy and compassion. Mercy and compassion. What do I mean by that? Prophet Muhammad brought Islam. But did he bring it by paksa orang masuk Islam? He paksa tak? And we refer him as our dawah payroll model. And then now we want to force people into our good things. Is that the right thing to do? Did the Prophet do that? Did the Prophet do that then? Just follow. But as far as I know, Allah, I have not come across with the Prophet force. No matter how good, he is still macam compassionate and merciful. Orang datang kepada dia dengan dosa pun Mengaku yang dia buat dosa pun dia tak nak macam apa, Dengar dia pun mengaku yang dia dengar Because dia tak nak punish a person Tapi kita ni, dengar dia ni macam gitu sikit dia Mungkin keluar dengan lelaki perempuan dia dah macam nak punish This are not the good things that you have to I mean, These are not good things that you should be practicing You can okay lah, this is not the good thing to do eh? This shouldn't be done But you shouldn't judge a person Okay, I will share later on. But in other words, you must have that heart of compassion. When I look at the brothers, I feel compassion. I feel like I want to talk to you, I want to help you. I want to back you, for example. But not a feeling where I feel I'm better than you, I want to back you, I want to make you the best, or I'm also the better one. It's not, it's not supposed to be that way. Okay? And every day we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Every day, every time we pray. So much of Bismillah. And I'll forget that Bismillah. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. We have to say that. We have Bismillah. Okay? And Allah is merciful. We say every day. Kalau Tuhan yang mempunyai kuasa, yang sentiasa membantu hamba ini, itu yang dapat Dirikan apa tu sebagai Tuhan yang masih pun apa lagi kita? Okay, the okay, next one. Patience. If preaching is easy, if preaching is easy, then it's not preaching. All the prophets before even Prophet Muhammad had one thing in common, and which is patience. Okay, because if you're not patient, it's kiri dan malas dan layar, it's kiri maju. Bila putus sikit, dia merajuk. Orang tak nak dengar, dah nak tidur-tidur ni pun, saya pun merajuk. Tak nak malas, nak ajar jauh-jauh tak ni. Dan, mari jumpa. This is all called patience. Okay? 
Just because you say the right thing, the last one, you will get the right reaction. I'm trying to say that it's not. This doesn't happen. Just because you say the right thing, doesn't mean you will get the right reaction. I want to say the good things. Oh, the watch is like this, the watch is like that. But you can say that. Like this, like that. Like this, like that. Oh, dah lebih kepik dan malam Buat aku sembilan puluh ribu lah Example lah yeah. So, this is why patience is One of the holding thoughts of your Dapak you know? I think this is the last one Good news, this is the last one Are you, are you happy? Okay, preach Not judge Preach, not judge Siapa tu sudah cari strap? Tak tengok juga. Awak semua tak tahu wayang? Mungkin saya yang jahat lagi gitu ni. Preach, not judge. Your duty is to invite people to come to Allah. Your job is to make people feel happy towards Allah. Your job is to make Islam so beautiful to the eyes of everybody around you. But it's not your job to judge them. Ini confirm masuk neraka. Jadi kalau tak bagi tulung betul-betul Haa, susah cakap Jadi, pakai baju semat Tapi ketat sangat Baik sampel lah Okay So, your duty is to preach, not by judgment Allah is the only judge He's the only judge who is rightfully the judge Not you Your duty is just to preach Okay And you're not perfect yourself You know Okay So this is the last part where you have to understand the etiquette of dakwah is that you are preaching, you are not a judge. You are just a preacher, not a judge. Okay? So next one should be last one. Thank you for listening. Wishing all the best in your dakwah inspiration, inshallah. Uh, I hope there's a Q and A, Jazza. Good. Very good. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. Um, thank you so much again. Minta maaf kalau ada salah silap apa, masih dan sebagainya. I hope you benefited from this uh, sharing session, insyaAllah. And I'll leave it to the MC, insyaAllah. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, I'll, I shall try to summarize. Why did some points of why you did? Um, We learned that we wouldn't be Muslims if not for the Nisahaba during the Amal all over the world. And to be a Ya'i, we should have humanity, knowledge uh, of your heart and mercy and compassion, patience, and to preach, not judge. Okay, now I'll open the floor for questions. Uh, anyone has questions? Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, I do have a question. Do you have a question? Is there any bad experience in that one that you have ever encountered or heard of? And how do you tackle and handle it? First of all, in my short experience in the mosque for three years, there are definitely a lot of bad encounters that we can face. It's not about Jawa, it's so easy. Lah. First of all, let's say for example, in the mosque, in Arab Majid this day, banyak-banyak anasir, the protectors, eh, that will challenge you. Let's say for example, I'm in Ustaz, in the mosque. I'm supposed to be the one who's shaping the community as opposed to shaping the ideas of the community. But that doesn't mean when you're from Ustaz, you're listened to. At the same time, me as an Ustaz, I cannot feel as if I know better. That's why I said humility is important. Because if not, you cannot work with people, you cannot discuss with people, you cannot share with people your ideas. Because at the end of the day, you should know that it doesn't mean your idea is the only one. And this is a big challenge to me. Because it always feels a challenge as a exercise in the mosque. Your ideas are not really the one that is taken all the time. But there are times when it is taken. Okay? Uh, besides that, of course, As a young person, a challenge is always when you speak, the elders are the the adults or the older ones will find that you are documented there. 
because they have more hold and more experience and all that. So how do I tackle it? I just carry on. And so the patient's part is the last part. Eh? And it was like the last part where I said, it's important that you just continue on to do what you do, as long as Allah knows that you are doing the right thing. And to me, that's how I overcome the challenges. Eh? Because you must be sincere in what you are preaching. If you are preaching because you want people to recognize you, then you cannot last long in this love of you. If you are preaching because you want people to like you, then again, you are not sincere and you will not last long in this love of you. But if you do it for Allah, no matter what people throw at you, so okay lah. Why should I avoid it? Yeah. As long as you are doing the right thing lah. Okay? As long as Allah knows. Anyone else? This question is start from here, everyone. Um, I think there are two. One is from me, one is from my sister here. Um, the first question. I'd like to say, Dawah is never easy, right? With your patients and all that. But then, um, like from my experience, sometimes when we do Dawah, like for example, we try to convey a message, okay? And we put it somewhere and then we try to... It's, it acts as a reminder for ourselves, lah, but sometimes when people bat you, uh, they will trust you. And then usually you will kaitkan with uh, kalau makan cili, tak sebedah kan? Even though we are not directing to them. So, and then um, what if the person has terasa to confront you? Because really the person thought that you are referring to him or her. What will you do? Yeah, and then um, the next thing is, uh, should we ask for forgiveness from that person? Because like secara tak langsung kita sakitkan hati dia. Even though memang betul niat kita bukan untuk orang tu sendiri. Yeah, and then okay. that's the first question for me. And then question from my sister. Uh, how do we react to criticism uh, when we do da'wah? Will there be sacrifices that we have to make when we start doing da'wah? Example, losing friends because they don't agree with what we say. Or do even if we do da'wah with the H3TK. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay, okay. okay Bismillah. Uh, there's two questions. Eh? First of all, about the message and trust. Eh? Kind of thing. And these people come to approach you, is it? Nasiba. Well, the most important thing is that you. It has to be taken. I'm trying to be fair. If you wanted to make the best or keep the best for this person, in my personal opinion, I'm saying you're wrong. There has to be a proper way. First of all, we have to reflect whether this approach that we do. During the mass Facebook punya dakwah, knowing that we had intended to actually rasa kali atau kasih terasa, and do you know and do you think that this way is the best way for you to change or her to change? If you know, then you did the right thing. But if you macam merasa boleh je, that's why I said about the wisdom part, the importance of wisdom. You need to practice wisdom because semua orang sama tak boleh. There has been times. When it's through Facebook, there has been time, there can be times when you Hey, siapa? Ashraf Macam ni lah, jangan lah You bring it one corner, you know, jadi tak malu You know, there are so many ways So, first of all My point is, wisdom has to be measured Whether you believe through your understanding of wisdom That this is the best method for him or her You did that And when he or she confronts you you, your first part by your consciousness and not conscious kan? Kita berasa sebesar itu is gone because we try to do the best thing. But if we had a malicious intent, kita memang sengaja nak berpendidikan yang diri. And berli to me is not a good thing. Berli is not. But to just lovingly share is a good thing. Bagi macam ni, macam nak berli-berli yang ada asyar. Bagi macam ni, macam dia, macam dia, macam dia, macam dia. It's berli, you know. Your berli, I think it's negative lah. But if, for example, this person comes to you and it, they come and they confront you, you have to first of all reflect on the action just now. 
And if you have to be directed, and your own personal punya feeling of love and compassion, mercy and compassion, ya. Siapa-siapa datang pun, if you are sincere and you are compassionate, orang tu akan rasa, I believe that. Orang tu akan rasa, like, once you say, nak maaf lah, that wasn't my intent. I wanted to just share because I worry for you, I wanted you to have the best. You know, once you say that, in my opinion, in my philosophy, the other person would actually be like, okay lah, I understand lah. Then, the trouble will be solved. Then, then. Okay? Sekarang dia, sekarang dia kena live lah. No, seriously, I mean, I understand lah. These are things which are, uh, what you say, you can't really do anything lah. If you put generally, tak niat pun nak, you know, offend dia. Then, as I said, if you really have no intention of offending him or her, then you should have no worries. Okay, then you can confront him. Saya memang niat saya dah. And people can tell, you know. Ini sengaja nak pilih aku minta. People can tell. So, if you are sincere, in other words, you have nothing to worry about. If you just memang nak put generally, then I will also say, macam mana sih kalau aku tak letak, pasal diri ke pasal aku tak letak lagi di future pun, masalah. Okay, so what I'm saying is that, uh, I will take it as space value that you have no intention of offending this person, and this person came. Let's explain it in a nice, best fashion. That's why, I'm going to call upon your Lord, with his name, and best preaching, and the good man of preaching, and preaching. So this is where the good man of preaching, where you also just psychologically share with this person. So it doesn't mean that it's like I love you as a brother or sister. I have no intention. Uh, please forgive me. And please be humble. Uh, please forgive me. I did not intend. That's why I put humility as the first part. Because when this situation occurs, when you are humble, people cannot do anything to you. People will know you are humble. But if you have a sense of arrogance, people can also tell. Okay? Am I okay? You, you still want to continue? He not like you, will you continue? <laughs> you see? Yeah. So that's what the first part. I go to the second question. How do we react to criticism? And about to losing friends and all that, is it something which is... Uh, how do we overcome, is it? How do we overcome criticism? Eh? Or how do we handle criticism again? Yeah? To be very honest with you, there is no one answer. There is no one answer to shh, to actually face criticism. Criticism can be of many, many, many types. It can be in a form of betul uh, belly, it can be a form of direct, or oh, jadi memang nak kena ribat lah, for example. It can be a form of criticism, you know. But if you are your own part, that's why the importance of learning psychology is 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 there. You know what psychology is? Yeah? We need to learn psychology, we need to learn counseling, because when people criticize you, there is no one way to react. But the five etiquettes that I gave you just now, inshallah, will at least reduce the after effects of criticism. Because once you're humble, again, in my personal opinion, many things will come actually to a neutral state. Because you're not offending them, you don't want to say Kalau you gaduh dengan gaduh, then there will be a problem. Kalau you also strict, you want your way, you want your say, you want your words to be taken by the other party, then you have a problem. But criticism, it works both ways. When the person comes to you and criticizes you, first of all, you have to reflect juga. Betul tak? Dia kritisan aku. If you are willing to criticize people, then be willing that you are also to be criticized after that. So it works both ways lah. Kalau kita nak cakap kasar dengan orang, kita nak criticize orang, orang criticize kita balik. Then you have to accept it lah. Kalau kita cakap one way, then after orang tu criticize kita cakap sesepi, kami tak tahu nak buat apa, then it's a problem. Okay? Do I answer the question number two? Oh, siapa yang nak tanya tu? <laughs> you can ask me that again. Hmm. Siapa? Nanti? Oh, Isha? Isha? Yeah, 
In other words, criticism is part of that one. In a, in, in a nutshell, when you are criticized, first of all, you have to engage. When I was in the mosque, there were many people who were critical of me. But my chairman said to me one thing. If you want to be in a mosque, and you expect everybody to like you, it's impossible. No way that everybody in this room will like me also. But what can you do? My chairman says, just engage. Huh? There's always a job to move on. Not everybody will like you. This is life. If you want everybody to like you, then something is wrong with you. You have to see a doctor. Because at the end of the reality bites. Not everybody likes you. And if those who criticize you are probably those who don't like you. But what can you do? You just engage. Huh? You just engage your body. And another one can also get you. Okay? Does it mean all criticize you? You just uh, pull out and then you pull out and No, you still have to engage. And it's just normal because if you did not do anything wrong, okay, why should you be afraid? If you did not offend a person, why should you be afraid? It's kind of masalah yang kita buat. Kita sengaja kita ada intention macam apa? Atas kerja ini, kita buat. Kita rasa masalah. But if you have nothing wrong, if you do anything wrong, you see why? Why you want to get angry with me? Then your conscience is clear. Why should you be afraid of criticism? If you know that you did not do anything wrong, and that's why a sound heart is important. Because if you do not offend anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing anyone. Because if you are not criticizing anyone, you are not criticizing Okay, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I think we have no questions, right? Okay, uh... Lagi tak ada question? Oh, okay. So, what happened? Why do I do this? Okay, uh, we have come to the end of the talk. I hope it has been beneficial for everyone here. Uh, this series will be followed by the Phase 2 Knowledge of Your Book in Dakwa. So, look up for updates in our Facebook. You can find it on your booklet. Okay, then next up... Okay, uh, next up we have Tafsir and Tadarut by Fazan Nadira. Uh, if some of you are unable to stay for it, please uh, fill in your feedback forms and pass to anyone of us wearing a jacket or like the people who don't mind. Yeah. It's very important because we uh, appreciate your feedback very much. Uh, but then before we go on to the next segment, we can have like, a 10 minute break. You can go outside and drink, like, get some drinks and just stay a lot of food. So we'll have a stoppers and by like 9.45, uh, come back inside, yeah. Or you can read the queen's side, yeah. So, yeah, thank you.